Hello everyone, it is Caitlin and today we are addressing an upper working to middle class woman in 1862. Today we are addressing an upper working class to middle class woman in 1862. It is first thing in the morning, I have on my wrapper which serves almost as a house coat so that I can brush my teeth, put in my hair, all those sorts of things. So now that the hair is done, let's get dressed. So I'm going to put on my stockings and garters. I am wearing plain cotton white stockings. And for garters, I have some elastic ones that are very similar to original garters of the time. These are going to keep my stockings up. My very first layer is called a chemise. Next up are drawers, which serve as underwear. Drawers of this time frame are split crotch, which made answering nature's call much easier once fully dressed. Now I'm going to put on my shoes. I'm wearing my Victorias from Fugui, featuring a rather new development in shoes, elastic gussets, which makes putting them on and off a breeze. Now we're going to put on the corset. Corsets serve many purposes, including giving you a fashionable shape, supporting your back, smoothing out your torso for the tight-fitted clothing of the 19th century, and bust support. As with most 1860s corsets, this one hooks up the front with a metal busk and laces up the back. A lot of people seem to think that women of this time frame only dressed like this if they had maids, but you can see it is quite possible to lace your own corset and you see women of all social classes and professions wearing corsets and hoops. Although this corset does pull in my waist a bit, it is not uncomfortable and I actually love the support that it gives. Now we're at skirt supports. I'm going to wear one petticoat underneath my hoop. This petticoat is white cotton and features some lovely tucks on the hemline for detail. Now I'm going to tie on a little crescent bustle. This is not completely necessary given my hoop does have a bustle already in it, but sometimes it's nice to have that little bit more of support. Next comes the crinoline or hoop skirt. This one is made from a needle and thread kit, which is exactly replicated from an original cage in their collection. At this point, I'm going to put on a couple more petticoats to soften the lines of the wire cage and to provide a bit more poof. With all the undergarments in place, it is time for the dress. Today is black silk, the bodice of which has been copied nearly exactly from an original in my collection. While my original bodice has since lost its skirt, I have recreated what it may have looked like based on other originals and photographs. Dresses of this time frame were generally one-piece dresses with a skirt and bodice basted together. This one closes with hooks and eyes from bust to waist, and then has buttons and buttonholes from neck to waist. A pretty little neck collar and matching cuffs that are basted into the wrist and neck. And no, this dress is not a morning dress, despite it being black. Black did not equate to morning, black was a fashion color as well. This fabric has too much sheen to truly be classified as a morning gown. Etiquette books of the time often suggested that women own a black silk dress as it was never out of place in the streets, at a funeral, entertaining, etc. Black was appropriate at any time or place and was a versatile choice. With the gown on, it's time to accessorize. Now my hair is already dressed, but I can accessorize it a bit. I, I could choose a net, either with a ribbon or without, but I don't think I will today. I think I will wear a comb. I'm going to add a silk belt in a contrasting color. The belt buckle is a reproduction by ensembles of the past based on original buckles. Now let's add some jewelry. All the jewelry pieces you're seeing today are reproductions by Beth Miller Hall. We're going to start off with a cameo brooch. And now earrings, little coral ones that are also reproductions by Beth Miller Hall. Now I am sufficiently dressed for the home. Just like this, I could play music, read a book, sit and do needlework, 
or oversee home management, or even entertain myself or others in the parlor. But if I wish to go into town or make calls upon the neighbors, we're going to need a bit more. And I'm going to check to make sure I have a coin purse, handkerchief, and a card case. Let's put on a bonnet first. This one's a reproduction by Danielle Perry at Timely Tresses. It is one of my favorite bonnets. I absolutely love the soft crown bonnets, and this one is just so lovely with its bright reds and neutral creams. I'm going to put on a little wrap to soften the figure, as fashion magazines state. I have several options, but I think I'm going to go with this original from the 1860s. I do not often agree with wearing original garments, but a shawl is not fastened upon the body, but merely draped around the figure, so it does not cause any stress to the garment. Now a parasol to complete the outfit. This one is antique from the 1860s, but has been recovered in modern fabric to replace the shattered original cover. And there you have it, how to dress a woman in 1862. Regardless of social class, the same basic layers would be worn by any woman in the 19th century. Thank you so much for Pioneer Farms for allowing me to film on premises at the Bell House. If you liked the video, please go ahead and like and subscribe for more getting dressed in 19th century clothing related videos. I hope you have a fantastic week and I will see you back here on Monday.